there, Raylan here. I am so excited to have Dan Neufer back on the channel. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, he is the creator of the ANS Rewire program and also the author of an amazing book called CFS Unraveled. He is just a wealth of information and has been working with people for years and years and helping them to recover from conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome or ME-CFS and now long COVID. So he is here today to talk about brain training. Is brain training the answer when it comes to recovering from conditions like ME-CFS? So um, I really hope you enjoy this and find it helpful and informative and uh, let's dive right in. Hello, Dan. It is so great to have you back on the channel. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Um, it's great to talk to you again today. Uh, yes, I'm so happy to have you here because brain training, uh, all things related, is such a hot topic, I find, at least in my world. I get a lot of questions about it. I see a lot of people talking about it, uh, lots of posts, lots of people using it with their recovery from various conditions like ME-CFS and the COVID long haulers and so forth. So I think just a good place to start is just, um, you know, could you just give us a general understanding of what exactly even is brain training? Because sometimes I see people <laughs> write comments are like, this all sounds fascinating. I don't know what brain training is. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a great question. And I think it's, it's actually, from my point of view, a lot wider than is generally accepted. But I think in the, in the CFS, Fibro, POTS community, brain training often refers to, to a, a group of programs and mm. Um, I'm usually lumped in with those programs because my program also has ANS, uh, has also got brain training. But I think brain training and, and these mechanisms are often, uh, should we just say, people describe them as psychological steps that they take to change how they relate to uh, triggers and stressors. So this has to do with psychological uh, factors such as attention. Maybe it's not psychological, maybe it's mental. Uh, so how we engage uh, our attention, uh, also the meaning of things, and, and a range of things like that. So in pain psychology, this is well understood, right? That there's a lot of research done uh, on the meaning of a pain. If the pain uh, means you're getting damaged, it's going to hurt more than if you think the pain means you're getting healed. Yes, same level of stimulus, but the meaning of it changes the physical experience. And uh, so this is what the brain training is. Uh, I think it's helpful to recognize that brain training is it can have a wider scope. Uh, in ANS Rewire, I talk about training the brain not with thoughts, but with the body. We can train the brain with uh, how the body uh, is engaged, how the body moves, how the body is held. This feeds directly into uh, a, a range of centers in the brain that interpret the way the body is being held. Um, I think uh, was Professor Ledoux has done wonderful work on this, uh, looking at how the brain uh, interprets the bodies to make a assessment of what you're about to face. Yeah, and so, so it, and obviously the breath is another way. Um, so there's many physical strategies uh, that that can affect the brain and can train the brain. In fact, I did a podcast with a researcher recently who does fantastic work. Uh, she is um, actually the um, won the International Fibromyalgia Research Award, and they train the brain uh, with a device that stimulates you. And that, again, goes, uh, it has to be done at a certain cycle of the heartbeat. And that trains the brain, the autonomic nervous system, to respond different to stimulus. So that's completely different than what people are doing in these brain training programs. Yeah. So different. Did you hear me say use the word different many times? So here's the thing. Why are we talking about this? Because I know you were a little bit, you asked me about all these topics you want to talk to me, all these questions you had for the, these videos. And, and I kind of brought this one up and I think you were, seemed a little bit surprised that I would say, is brain training the answer, right? Because you've done lots of interviews and you've found this common theme, right? Where people seem to be doing brain training of all different types. Sometimes they did their own brain training. Yes. Or sometimes they did a program. And I think you said that you even reflecting, even though you didn't officially do any brain training, as you reflected, you thought maybe you also did brain training, right? Yeah. I When I look back, I can see the, the connection. And I think I'm glad that you explained all that because for me as well, I imagine other people, my understanding of brain training was just sort of sitting alone and 
having some thoughts, you know, mm-hmm. thinking some different things, and that was changing your brain. And I didn't, until more conversations with people like yourself, start to understand that it's connected to activity and it's connected to your response to things. So I started to see thing, how things like even how exercise was so important with my recovery. But the impact and the connection between, you know, my thoughts and my stress and um, so many complex things that, yeah, even though I've said often, I'm like, brain training wasn't a part of my recovery. I, I do see now that it definitely was. Mm. Now, absolutely. I put two people on a treadmill and what they do in their head is completely different. And so the impact on the nervous system of being on a treadmill is also going to be varied. And one can have a brain training component and the other one cannot uh, and this is whether they're healthy or not and uh, I mean uh, brain training is so many f- shapes and forms uh, the neurofeedback right people get things electrodes on their head they can watch a video and they can train their brain to respond differently um, there are all kinds of psychological therapies um, uh, even playing sport is brain training right okay I play competitive I play competitive table tennis right it's such a fast sport the ball comes you do a movement, you block it, you hit it back, you go, I can't do that. But you did it before you even went to do it, and you knew exactly what tension to hold in the bat, what angle, yeah? You knew everything about how to do that in maybe a tenth of a second. Like, obviously, you didn't do that, but you've trained your brain how to do it automatically. So brain training has a huge... It can be very varied. But here's the thing. Is brain training the answer now sounds odd i've obviously been saying for 10 years that the problem in this group of illness is is that it's brain dysfunction it's not psychological it's a dysfunction of the brain and it has a lot of other dysfunctions which is why it gets confused because it's not just a dysfunction of the brain it's a the the list is as long as my arm right so whenever people say to me oh it's not the brain dysfunction, it's this and this and this. I, I can't argue with them because they're right. It is all these other things, right? And and so I advocate, and brain training is certainly central in a program that I have. So, but is it the answer? You see, the, here's the problem I have. I know that there's lots of different programs and some people will do, go and do a program which has brain training and they don't recover. So if brain training is the answer, then why didn't they recover? And sometimes in these communities, which I, of course I'm advocating for, and I'm advocating for brain training, and I'm, I'm trying to get people to go into this, but we've got to do this in a positive, balanced way. Because what happens is when people don't have success with whatever approach they took, what conclusions do they make? They go, well, I screwed up. I'm not good enough. I, I didn't do it well enough. All right? uh, other people are recovering and I'm not recovering, so there's something wrong with me. They start to feel bad about themselves. And this can be, they, sometimes people can feel terrible about themselves because they feel they just didn't do it hard enough or well enough. Or, and this is damaging. And we mustn't think like that. Like in the INSBY program, brain training is one component. And we did another video recently where we talked about the different triggers and I kind of started to touch base how we need to resolve the on the triggers that started onset, right? So we need a multilateral approach. If you have not addressed some other physical dysfunctions in your body that are very severe or uh, psychological uh, issues, health issues, that can easily explain why you don't have success with the brain training. Or what about this? What about if the way the brain training is done, remember I said there's so many different ways. Some use machines, right? If this is a psychological way of doing the brain training and you're not wired that way, because we're all different. Some people are kinesthetic, some people are more auditory, some people are visual, right? I get people come to me all the time saying, oh, I'm in a brain training program and I had to visualize all this stuff and I can't visualize it, you know? is there any point in me going in your program, you know? And I'm like, yeah, we're all different. So if you didn't have success, it doesn't mean you're a bad person or it's your fault or you should beat yourself up or it doesn't mean you can't recover. What it does mean is you need to try something else or you need to do something else with your brain training. And 
What I often say when people have difficulties in, in my program, I say, well, sometimes I tell them to stop doing it because I can see there's something else obviously going on that needs to be resolved. And I say, go work this out. Go work on this. Don't keep going with this because your brain training approach, you, you'll feel disheartened with it if you're not getting results. I say, save it. It's a valuable, good strategy. Save it. Don't use it. Fix this other thing. And then as you make significant progress with it, come back and then get that momentum. So I really wanted to have that chat because I think it's great to take responsibility because yes, the truth is sometimes people don't do it well enough. Sometimes people don't put enough effort in. It's kind of hard when you're sick, you know? We all would like to be like the most amazing person who does everything perfect, but it's hard when you're sick. And sometimes we do need to take responsibility. But sometimes we've just got to, you know, we, we mustn't start blaming ourselves, right? There's a difference between taking responsibility and nasty self of blame. And then we've got to strike that balance. Do you know where I'm coming from? I, I do. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I do hear from actually quite a few people that they're, they have a reluctance for taking any program that hints at brain training because they've heard that if it doesn't work, I'm going to be told it's my fault. And that's a really daunting thing to set yourself up for. So people don't want to go into that. I feel very strongly about it. And I get a little emotional about it because that is so inappropriate. Because like, if you, if you do that, I mean, like, you know, think about how hard it is living with chronic illness. Imagine having that lumped on you. And, and I think that that will probably feed into that podcast that we're looking at doing, uh, talking about, uh, you know, our, our mental health and what we need to do. But we have to get away from these things. And, and I have to put a caveat on this. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt you like this, Ryan, but I, I can't help myself here. I feel very passionate about this. It, we could understand though that, you know, I hear this, these messages. And I think sometimes these messages are given and it's toxic and bad. But I think sometimes we interpret those messages like that and they're not given. I think it's important that we always make the choice ourselves not to look for such messages or even if they are given to dismiss them. We've got to go in self-compassionate and, and, and self-preserving and, and self-caring. Absolutely. Something else that I hear from people quite a bit and I'd love to hear your thoughts on is um, I, I'm interested in brain training programs, but I hear that they can make you worse. I hear that they teach you to ignore your symptoms and just power through and I'm going to make myself bedridden. So is there something that people should be cautious of or scared of with brain training? Such a great point. And I would say it's not just with brain training, but it's with other strategies. Like what about graded exercise therapy? Yeah. Right. And again, I'm wondering if these things are sometimes misinterpreted. Right, because I've looked at people who talked about greater exercise therapy, and it says, "Oh, you shouldn't push yourself." But yet, the, because the message is take do a little bit more each day, that means you do a little bit more each day, even if it's a tiny bit, or a little bit more each week. And what if you don't feel up to it, or what if it's too much? That it kind of suggests you keep doing it, and then you crash, right? And it's the same with the brain training approach, uh, saying you should ignore your symptoms. Now, ignore is an interesting interesting word what what does ignore mean ignore means that i have recognized it but i don't act on it it's tied in with attention yes so people will sometimes use the word ignore when i talk about how we relate to our uh, bodily sensations uh, but the first thing i talk to people about is that any symptom you have that worsens any symptom that you have that uh, is new Go talk to your doctor, for goodness sake. Imagine you, I'm getting chest pains, right? My left arm starts to hurt. Oh, no, no, I'm brain training. I mean, this is dangerous. This would be crazy, right? So I say you should never ignore a symptom, ever. If you get a new symptom or symptoms that are worsening, you need to immediately report that to your doctor. and You need to take steps. Now, paying attention to symptoms is something different, right? If I've got a symptom that's with me every day, all the time, that drives me insane, right? And I'm going to start changing how I relate to that symptom. That's a different story. Yeah. And so I think that this is an important distinction to have with, with brain training. It's not ignoring your symptoms. It's just not engaging with, with them when you don't need to take action. 
Yeah, this is one of the things that I really like and I really respect about your program, um, your ANIS rewire program, and just the general approach that you have when you're working with people, because you're very candid in that the things that you're doing to recover, you should be seeing progress. You should not be getting worse. You know, I was very confused in my recovery and I got a lot of mixed messages of, you know, certain programs or things. Oh, if you feel worse, that means it's working. And if you feel really worse, that means it's really working. And I just love how candid you are with like, no, that's not it. And no, don't just keep doing it blindly for a year. And if you're seeing no progress, let's look at what's happening. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I, I think we've all, uh, someone spoke to me the other day about the chronic illness, uh, you know, experience. And I'm thinking if I actually look at the people I've talked and the stories I've heard and the years of their suffering and all the experience, uh, I've, got probably somewhere in my own experience i've probably got somewhere between 10 and a hundred thousand years worth of chronic illness experience all right and in that i can tell you it doesn't seem like a great idea just to keep doing stuff when you're not getting any better and i wanted to say here it's not what you're doing it's how you're doing it yeah i mean even in my program i i can tell you that i've had people I, look first of all let me say i've had people who've tried all these other programs and they said oh it didn't work for them or they couldn't do some of the things, or they didn't like it. And they've come in my program, and they were a bit reluctant, or should I do it, blah, 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 they've done it. And obviously, I, I, the brain training is, I think it's more flexible than some approaches. Uh, I think it's, which can be a negative, by the way. Uh, it's also got the multi other physical strategies, right? It's got wider scope of brain training rather than just psychological mechanisms. And they go in and they do it, and then they recover, even though they failed with the other approach. Now, here's the next thing. I can tell you there have been some people who had gone in my program and they kind of didn't get anywhere. They were trying all these different things. I have to do this. I have to watch the diet and this and that and that. And, that. and uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there. And obviously we stagger it so that people don't feel overwhelmed. But you know what? It, it didn't work for them. And they go off and they go and do another brain training program which has like maybe a program that has maybe 5% of what's in my program. But that's 5% that they really focus on and they really just do that really well and they have success. So this is the thing. It's not of one fit all. It doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong or intellectually or medically or scientifically. At the end of the day, it's what works for you. I even had one person I remember in particular who I even coached and I told them specifically, you know, they had some issues with their life they needed to address. But one of the issues is also how we relate to our stresses. And they took this on board as meaning, oh, I just have to ignore, ignore, there's that word again, right? I have to ignore these problems and I have to just not stress out and bliss out, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't get any better. And, I, and, and then they went off somewhere and they did a, a, a psychotherapy of all things, right? Uh, and they worked out that in the psychotherapy, oh, I'm getting really stressed out and sick. Oh, yeah, why is that happening? Well, because look what you're doing in your life. It's terrible. And they're like, I've got to change something. <laughs> well, that's the exact thing I said when I was coaching them, right? But they couldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. So what is the gain that we get out of this? The gain is this. Sometimes we need to hear the messages and the teachings from different people. So if one program didn't work, doesn't mean another program doesn't work, even if it's very similar, because you hear it. And this is why I've got so many teachers in my program. Because if it was just me, how would that work, right? And who are the teachers in my program? The other people who have recovered. So I'm like, how did you use the, this technique? How did you use that technique? What did you do? I'm asking how they use the program. And then people listen to it and go, oh, oh, that's how you do it. I mean, they're not saying anything different than I'm saying, but the difference is that now we understand it, right? Because someone else said it in a way that you can get your head around. And Another thing, Ryan, is often as people progress in their recovery and get more healthy, the way they learn and interpret changes. So I find people do the program uh, again, like let's say they start doing the bed bound and they get to like 40, 50 percent and they're sort of trying to do the program and they go, okay, reset. And they go through the whole program again and they're like, there's all this stuff I didn't know there was. Oh, I didn't get that before. So the message of all this is if a program doesn't work for you, try a different program. And whatever you do, you need to maintain a self-caring. Uh, it's okay. It's good and important to take responsibility, but don't go down the self-blame 
and don't do any strategy in a way that makes you feel more stressed out. And that's what happens sometimes when people engage in brain training. They try and do it. They think, I have to do this perfectly. And they, it's not what they're doing. It's how they're doing it. They're doing it in a way that causes more stress. And that's how people can get worse with brain training. In fact, you can get worse with anything. It's interesting hearing you say all that. I'm just reflecting on you know some of the recovery interviews that I've done. And there have been quite a few. There's an definite undeniable theme of brain training being a very effective tool for a lot of people, you know, for quite a while, you know, I was trying to get a variety of approaches out to people with this channel, different things that work and people, uh, you know, when I reach out to them or they reach out to me and I'm like, how did you recover? And they tell me brain training. And for a while I was almost like, oh no, not another brain training story. <laughs> but if this is what's working, I am not going to filter what's coming at me and be like, no, I don't want to share any more of that. If that's what's working, that's what's working. But a lot of these people, my point being, um, when I talk to them, have said, and you'll hear it in the recovery stories on my channel I, when they share it, if it, if I had tried this at a different point, I'm not sure it would have worked. You know, I had to get some other things in my life in order, or I had to be in a certain place. And that's not everybody. But I, I, the way you say that, you know, the one program doesn't work, and then a little while later, a different, not so dissimilar program does work. I think sometimes we're just more ready for it or in a different place or have got some other things in our life addressed that needed to be as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've, I did an interview with someone who covered my program. They had a pretty good, you know, uh, reasonable speed recovery. You know, I, I can't remember six months, 12 months. I can't remember what it was. And, and I had to ask them, I'm like, but cause I had a look and I'm like, when, when did you first learn about the program? And it was like, oh, five, five years ago. I'm like, so what, why did it take you so many years before you did it? Like, like, and then you had this really good result. It, it, it's just like, what, what happened, you know? And, and they, they said, you know, they, they weren't ready for it. Like you said, because they, they still had to work things out. They weren't hundred percent convinced that this is what it is. They had other work they had to do. And, and sometimes people know they're not ready because they've got real problems in their life they're, they're not ready to go on a healing journey they've got to deal with the real life problems that that they're in right now um because we often have more of these when we're chronically ill not less yeah so yeah being being ready is is important and i think it's important to be flexible and and, and open-minded and you know one of the last things i guess to say in this is you know you mentioned about recovery interviews I think people should listen to these. It doesn't matter where they are, they should listen very carefully. And I, I tend to make a specific note of digging in a great lot of detail. And people have, some many people appreciate it. Some people kind of go, why are you doing that? Uh, I guess it's a scientist in me. Because what I can tell you, what I've always found from the very beginning is that people will say, I did this to recover, whatever this is. And it's not this. It's this and it's that and it's this and it's that. <laughs> and often they don't realize it themselves. If some people will tell you I did all these things. Some people will think, oh, yeah, yeah, I did do that. But they didn't realize that it was part of their journey. Yeah. And that includes people who did just brain training. And it includes people who did other just physical strategies, right? Because the ones who did just physical strategies did brain training without realizing it. <laughs> Half the yeah. time, uh, and well, I, all the time that I've really seen, and 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 the people who did just brain training tended to do a whole bunch of other strategies, like I would say ninety five, ninety nine. I don't know what percentage of time, but I've only seen a handful of cases where I've seen someone do a sole brain training without any physical strategy, diet, nothing, and they recovered. It, it's I think it's quite rare. Yeah, I think that's a good point about really listening to the stories because I think the same thing, our understanding, we can only share when we do these recovery interviews, our understanding as the person telling the story of what our recovery was. And I've shared my story a lot and people call me out on stuff all the time, which I love, but they see things that I don't see. They're like, okay, well, you say that when you recovered, it's when you met your now husband and you moved in together and you were in this loving, supportive relationship, but you never talk about how that impacted your recovery. And I'm like, oh, 
that's a massive one. How did I not factor that in? You know, so it's, you, you really do have to look at everything. We, we have yeah. this, I think, vision of it was this one thing I did, but it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big picture. A lot of things working together, I think. It's, it's more than one thing and it's not what you do. It's how you do it. I think a good way, um, to sort of wrap this up for now, because this is a big topic, but, it's a good problem to have. You know, I think years ago, it felt like we had no options for recovery from conditions like any CFS. And now there are a lot. And, you know, in my Facebook group, I see people talking about brain training programs a lot. And the question that comes up repeatedly is a little bit of overwhelm. Like, which one should I do? So what would your thoughts or suggestions be for people out there who are considering these types of programs? How do they figure out which one to take? Mm -hmm. this is this is a really a great question and people have always been a little bit confused that i'm not just self-promoting my own program right uh and that even on my youtube channel and stuff i've got interviews with people who did other programs they're like this is weird right but i tell you what it's for the reason i said is i think what will work best is that which you think you can engage in best because it's not what you do it's how you do it and so you need to look at who's the teacher and what is the material that you've seen? Ideally, they give you some, right? And if it really resonates with you and you really connect with this, then go with your gut instinct and go on that path, right? This is why I really strongly discourage people coming to my website and buying the program. I'm like, please don't do that. Watch the four intro lessons, see what I'm about, see how it's delivered, see what the scientific foundation for the program is, see what it involves that you need to do. Can you do that? Would you like to do that? Can you commit to doing that, right? And if you go, yeah, I think I can do that. That looks great. That This makes sense. I want to do it. This is it. Then enroll, right? But if you look at it and go, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't like him. I don't like this. Or it seems too much or too hard. And you see another program where they talk about something very specific and a singular strategy. And they say, do it like this. And, and you like it. Go for that one, right? Because you're more likely to really do it. <laughs> And, and but whatever you path you choose, don't be like if you don't get the outcome that you wish, right? So the question was, is brain training the answer? And I would say it's absolutely an essential component of recovery. But is it the answer? Well, my point is, if it didn't work for you, there's a whole bunch of reasons. And I try and educate people of why that isn't a program, and that's why we do the multilateral stuff. But it's if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't mean that it you can't recover. It doesn't mean that you did it wrong. Well, you may have done it wrong, but <laughs> it doesn't mean it's your fault. Yes? Because it's not just about whether you take the responsibility and do the hard work and that you persist with it. So there is a little bit of you know responsibility we have to take. Sometimes people don't do it well enough, right? But a lot of the time, it's also about whether you can do it. Yeah? What if you're just not wired that way? All right, if I ask you to do specific visualizations and you're not a visual person, you can't do it. So does that mean you can't recover? No, you just need a different approach that works for you. And I've seen people do brain training that had not based on any program. They used machines. They used neurofeedback machines. Yeah? Um, so there's all kinds of ways of getting across the line. So yeah, my, my message is be kind to yourself. Uh, I think that's a really important one. This is such a tough journey and uh, we seem to put so much, pile so much onto ourselves. That compassion piece is, is just really important. Um, I imagine a lot of people on my channel are familiar with your program, but for those who might not be, can you tell us a bit about ANS Rewire? What, what can people expect if they wanted to go into that program? Yeah, uh, I'll give you a short, uh, a short explanation. I mean, like I said, they can check out the full lessons that, that will help them work it out. But the program is... First of all, it's delivered online. The program based on the whole explanation that this illness is caused by anus dysfunction. And it recognizes that there's secondary dysfunctions. And it, it's an education program. So it explains to you how the illness works, how you can get triggered, how you get ill, and why it perpetuates in quite a lot of detail. And it does that to allow you to become more cognizant about how you engage in life and how that can impact you. So then it talks about lifestyle changes. It talks about ways, uh, a whole bunch of physical strategies to improve your well-being that feed directly into MEC vest, fibromyalgia, POTS. Um, 
It talks about uh, things to talk to your doctor about. Uh, it talks about how to enge- how to engage with other healthcare professionals, whether they're doctors, naturopaths, uh, psychotherapists, whatever, physiotherapists. It talks about physical strategies, like um, how to engage in physical activity. And it talks about a range of brain training uh, approaches and how to customize them in a way that suits you. And it's all kind of wrapped in a way that is we seek for to to be motivational so we get one lesson a day so that you don't feel overwhelmed and that you build your engagement with your recovery rather than saying, oh, I have to do all these things because that's too hard. We're sick. We can't do anything after that, right? So it's about saying, how can I do this in a way that I don't have to do anything? It just becomes part of my life. It just becomes part of your life. So, you know, you do it for this week and the next week and then afterwards you're not doing it. It's just part of your life. And so that's how we help people build it. And so that's how the program. Well, I can definitely say since having you on the channel a couple of times, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say that as a result, they have done your program and they are just so grateful to me, to you, and that they've had a ton of success with it. You know, I'm not saying I don't know what's going to work for people out there, but my goal is just to put options out for people to consider, to talk to their trusted healthcare professionals and see what is a good fit. But I do know that the feedback you know, the unofficial sort of feedback that I'm getting from people, uh, a lot of people, is that they are really enjoy the approach of the program and they're having a lot of success with it. So I definitely encourage people to at least take a look. I will have, of course, all of Dan's information, his website, where you can learn more and check out those free introductory videos, um, his social media spaces and so forth, um, because I think it just is a really wonderful thing. So thank you again for taking the time to, uh, to talk well, with me and to share so your years and years of insight uh, on this condition uh, with, with my viewers. Well, thank you for those kind words and, and uh, mentioning those things, uh, Raylan, you know, and um, you know, I, I'm glad we had this conversation. I think this is a really, really important one because I think the most important thing, whatever thing you do, is that after whatever you try and whatever you do, that you come out a little bit better somehow. And you should never come out worse. So um, I'm hoping that this has helped people focus on that number one objective. Wonderful. Well, Thank you so much for people watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this, Dan and I have you know, a, a few more videos planned coming up to covering a range of topics. So if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? <laughs> uh, you're not going to want to miss all the great stuff that is coming. So yeah, thank you so much, Dan, for, for your time today. I really appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who's watching. Looking forward to your comments as always. I would love to hear um, your thoughts and your experiences with brain training programs. You know, what what has worked for you? Uh, And yeah, that is it for today. Uh, Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video.